y'all. Today we're going to be making some make-ahead breakfast recipes and we're going to start with anadama bread and I hope, I, I hope I'm saying that correctly and if not please leave a comment and let me know um, the correct way. So I'm going to start with just weighing my ingredients and this anadama bread is great for toast for breakfast and so I'm going to make two loaves to have for toast on hand this week. So I have some flour that I measured and now I'm gonna add some cornmeal and I need about five ounces of cornmeal and I have to pour this really slow because it pours out really fast sometimes and then what messes up the weights and sometimes I go a little over with weight, but it's okay. So this is gonna be about five ounces of the cornmeal and then we're going to have some yeast. It's about a tablespoon of yeast and I'll post a link to this recipe and just so you know I am doubling it for this because I want two loaves. So here's some salt. I'm going to chop up about six ounces of butter and melt it and while I'm doing this the other recipes that we're going to be making today we're going to make some baked oatmeal mixes. We're going to make granola and we're going to make cinnamon rolls. So y'all stay tuned for the rest of those. And um, next we will use some molasses. Some water. And then I'm going to add back the melted butter. And we're just going to stir this up to kind of get the molasses to incorporate with the butter and water a little bit better. I'm going to mix up the dry ingredients in the mixer just to get it all incorporated before I add the wet ingredients that I just mixed in the, that I just whisked up. So I'm just going to add a little bit at first because it's, you can see it's making a mess and it's hard to do this one handed. So I'm going to get this mixed with some of the dry so it doesn't splash everywhere. And then I'll add the rest and get it all incorporated. And you just want to mix this until you get everything mixed up and then it's going to have to mix for a few minutes to get to the point where it pulls away from the sides of the bowl and has, um, a you know ball dough shape now I'm going to spray this big bowl I have here and I'm going to put some flour on this cutting board and just roll the dough out into a nice smooth ball I'll knead it a few times first and get it to where it's gonna be nice to rise in the bowl for about two hours just till it doubles in size, but I'm just gonna need a few times here just to get it soft and all nice and uniform. I love bread. I used to make bread all the time and then we stopped for some reason, but with when the pandemic came back, it was a lot easier to make bread every day because it was hard to find and so I really enjoyed getting back into bread making. And I make this particular anadama bread several times a week sometimes because it is so good. And here, I, you know what, I need to cut this in half before I get started with the putting it in the pan. So you can see it doubled in size. This is after a two hour rise and it doubled in size. And now I am going to shape it for the next rise in the bread pans and these are small bread pans they're like eight by four I think and so I'm going to press this out into a rectangle that's about six by eight inches so that I can roll it and shape it into the smaller pan.
I'm going to cover both of these with some saran wrap and just let them sit for about another hour and then I'm going to bake them here. They are already out of the oven and smell yummy for about 40 minutes and then I'll let it cool for about two hours. I'm going to slice this up and get it ready for the week to make it a little easier. And yes, this last piece is mine. I always get the end piece and I usually slather it with butter. But today I'm hungry and we're just going to go straight in for this yummy end piece. Does anybody else like the end piece <laughs> of bread, especially when it's hot out of the oven? It's always so, so good. But this is my piece to eat. Now we're going to work on the baked oatmeal mixes and normally I store these in glass jars but I only had one glass jar left so the rest I'm going to put in these Ziploc bags but I'm going to make three different mixes and each mix serves like six people so we're going to fill this jar and these bags with enough for three mornings worth of breakfast that we can just put together anytime we want and you do add eggs and vanilla and milk to this when you get ready to make it in the mornings but just having the dry ingredients already measured out ready to go in a mixed form it makes it so so much easier so this is just some quick oats that I'm going to add to each container and I did forget my funnel so this is probably going to make a mess when I get to the jar we'll start with the bags The great thing about this mix too is you can kind of add whatever you have in hand, on hand at the time for a mix in. Like if you have apples, you can chop some apples. If you have dried cranberries or fresh cranberries or chocolate chips or pecans or any other type of you know nut that you might want to add to the mix before you bake it, you can do that when you go to make it that you know in the morning. So. That's always, I always add something in. Usually it's chocolate chips, but sometimes it's cranberries or cranberry white chocolate chips. And um, it's, it's a big hit. So we're gonna add some brown sugar to each one. cinnamon baking powder and a little bit of salt and then these are going to be ready to go so I can just put them in the pantry and whenever we're ready for them in the morning we dump it out, add the other ingredients, and they're ready to bake. Now we're gonna get started on some cinnamon rolls. I have flour, water, butter, sugar, yeast, uh, dry milk powder, and some salt. I'm doubling this recipe too because I'm going to do a big pan of cinnamon rolls for this week and then I'm going to have two smaller pans to go in the freezer for you know to take out the night before I might want to do it the next morning for my girls 
So um, the big pan will be for this week. It's Thanksgiving week, and we usually have cinnamon rolls Thanksgiving morning since the Thanksgiving meal takes all day to prepare. So I doubled this recipe so that I could get a big pan and two smaller pans. Okay, you can see here that it doubled in size and so I am going to divide this dough in half too so that I get um, two long rolls. Punch it down first. And then I'm going to cut it in half and I'm going to roll each section into the length of this cutting board which I I think it's like 18 by 9 maybe or 10 by 18 is the size of the cutting board I'll have to check it's hard to see the measurements on here but um, so I'm just gonna roll it out the length of this cutting board and then add the butter and the mixture of brown sugar and cinnamon that I have here
I know this looks like a ton of brown sugar, but um, there's not much sugar in the actual dough. So these turn out really, really well and they're not overly sweet. At least to me, they're not overly sweet. So um, yeah, this is just the brown sugar and cinnamon on the inside and I'm gonna roll them up. And what I like to do is, well, let's sell the seams first. So what I like to do is I cut this in half because I want 12 cinnamon rolls. So I'm gonna cut it in half first and then I'm gonna cut that section in half. And then I'm gonna make two cuts on each of those sections so that I get uh, three rolls for each of those four sections. And that makes 12. So see, I'm just gonna make two cuts here to make three rolls here and then I'll do this the whole way so I have 12 rolls total and for this bunch I'm going to put in the big pan like I said for this week and then I'll do another roll in a minute so that I can have two more smaller pans of six each for the freezer. These look fairly small right now, but they will rise a good bit before you bake them. And so when you have them in the refrigerator, you need to take them out an hour beforehand uh, before you bake them so that they can kind of come up to room temperature and start to rise a little bit more. They will rise some in the refrigerator. This is what they look like after they've baked up and see they rose pretty good and we have cream cheese icing for the top. Here we're going to start the granola and I'm actually going to be using two different types of oatmeal. I'm going to use the quick oats, the small quick oats and then the larger old fashioned oats and equal parts of both those. You can see it's a little bigger and some almonds, some pecans, coconut brown sugar, salt, and cinnamon. And I'm just gonna stir it up a little bit just so it's kind of incorporated. And then I have honey, vegetable oil, And I'm going to stir this up until it's completely coated and everything's kind of wet. And then we're going to bake it on a foil lined tray in the oven for about an hour, stirring about every 15 minutes. And this is a good base granola recipe that you can also add. Once it's cooled down, you can add chocolate chips or dry cranberries. So thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed watching me make these four breakfast make-ahead recipes. And if you did, please subscribe to this channel. I have some more meal prep coming up. Thanks. See y'all next time.